Yeah, that was making me think I saw blood. Just absolutely no blood. Oh, baby. We got deer. Oh, right when I gave up hope. Hi everybody, welcome back to Bobby's Bucks. And today I wanted to talk about the buck that I harvested on public land. So I wasn't really seeing a lot of mature deer. This was only the second mature deer that I had seen. And, and last night I ended up picking a different spot because the wind, even though the weather channel was saying that the wind is blowing this way, I got to my stand placement or location and uh, it, it wasn't good. So I had to back out of there and go and try to find some fresh sign. I ended up finding a couple scrapes and I got into this tree that had, uh, it was almost like the shape of a Y. I would, I put a couple sticks on, I got into the tree, actually crawled through uh, the break in the tree where it split into two different stems and then put the stick on the opposite side so I could be on the other side of the tree so I could uh, shoot, shoot the buck. So it's November 11th and I am so whipped, beyond whipped. I'm exhausted, my muscles are killing me, yada yada yada. It's the rut. So I went to go on a spot today, so I just decided to skip it. And I came out to this little strip of woods. This little filter of woods where there's a couple scrapes down here. Actually right below our, our setup. About ten yards away, five yards away really. But there's scrapes all in here, so hopefully we get a buck running through here. Last year I killed a deer about a hundred yards over there with my rifle. So I've never hunted this little strip. I've hunted about a hundred yards that way. But. I seen a deer on private land across some cattails and I grunted at him as loud as I possibly could. And it looked like he walked off. And about 15 seconds later, I blew a snort wheeze and just hope for the best. Was really hoping that he would make, would, would come in. And this is about a hundred yards away. He ended up coming all the way in and he actually brought a spike with him. So he was about 20 yards away, um, getting closer to the scrapes, and the spike ended up walking in behind me. And he caught my wind and uh, ran off. And I really thought the hunt was over right there, but about 10 seconds later, this buck ended up walking closer to the scrapes, and I was able to, as soon as he walked on the other side of the tree, I was able to draw back and shoot him. I didn't make that great of a shot. Last night, I ended up shooting him really um, far back. You can see here's the lung area and I ended up shooting. I mean I might have caught a little bit of it but and maybe maybe I broke or I cut the, the diaphragm and when you cut the diaphragm the lungs um, the that chamber loses pressure so that will get the deer to expire. So after I shot the buck when I walked up on it there wasn't very much blood. I found a little sapling that had some blood on it and I found a couple specks of blood and when you're in when in doubt back out when you're not confident about the shot and you know what happened was when I came back in there in the morning with good light um, I, I didn't find any blood and I started searching the general area where I thought he was and I gotta tell you I'm getting a bad feeling there is like absolutely zero blood I've it's been about an hour and now I'm starting to grid search I'm walking through this really tall stuff getting that horrible pitting feeling This is some pretty soppy stuff. I just kept at it and I finally found a speck of blood and it wasn't only a few steps more and I seen him lying there. Making me think I saw blood. Just absolutely no blood. Oh! Baby, yes. We got blood. 
We got deer. Oh, baby. Oh, yeah. Holy mother. Oh, man. I was starting to get that bad feeling, you know, when you, you just don't think that it's gonna happen. I didn't think I was gonna find this buck. You know, I've been going after it really hard, hunting public land since October 28th. And, you know, I give up a lot of stuff to, to do this. So I look forward to it every year and I'm sacrificing a lot of time with my family and work. And So the, the, the spike's over my shoulder downwind looking right at me. Here comes this buck and I went to go grab my bow and that spike busted me. So I'm caught with my hand stuck on my bow like this and uh, he ended up blowing and running off. This, this buck wasn't even affected. He ended up, I mean, that almost blew the hunt. He ended up walking into the scrapes and he was about five yards away from the scrapes and I drew back once he got on the other side of the tree. I had my bow waiting, I drew back uh, took one more look. It was a little dusk and uh, a little dark and and I Shot him broadside and I actually ended up shooting him far back and there wasn't a lot of blood So when in doubt back out and that's what I did. I let him sit 12 hours and uh, Looks like he died. I remember sitting in the tree and it looks like he bedded down right here and He died if you leave him alone. They'll expire if you leave them, you let them lie, let them die, and they'll expire in most cases in the first bed that they bed down in. So really happy with this buck. Uh, looks like a three-year-old. You know, he's almost a 10 point. Looks like he wanted to grow another one. I like how these main beams almost touch. They're about maybe five inches apart. I'll always take my grunt tube in the woods and I don't usually make a lot of calls. I don't do blind calls. Unless I see a deer, then I'll make a grunt. Um, I will do a snort wheeze if the buck looks like um, he's more of the, the buck in charge. Um, you know, if you're fine with shooting three-year-old deer, three, four-year-old deer, in most cases a snort wheeze will will bring them in out of curiosity. But when you're talking about um, even four, five, six-year-old deer, you know, these are more mature deer and they get to be that age because they're very smart and they don't just run into, um, you know, situations out of curiosity all the time. So last night I couldn't get to sleep because for one, I didn't know if he was that great of a buck because I couldn't really see the brow tines. Um, so I was so worried that I shot. I know he had a nice frame, but I was so worried. I was like, did I even shoot a good deer? You know, all these thoughts are running through your mind, but I'm really happy. So now I gotta get him field dressed and I'll probably call my son, one of my boys to, to help me drag him out because he's pretty big, so. I made a really good decision on not pushing him because he ended up dying in the first bed that he lied in. And when you let him lie, They'll, they'll die and in most, in most cases they'll expire in the first bed that they bed down in and that's what he did. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Now we're going to cape this buck out. <laughs>